go ahead and record and I'm going to pin the video to you so we don't see my ugly mug and we have you here. Okay, we are uh, talking with Stevie Salas, uh, San Diego uh, area musician, I believe from Oceanside, right? Yeah, I, I was born in Oceanside, yeah. And who went on to, you know, doing some great things. And I mean, the, the name list that you're associated with is pretty incredible from Mick Jagger to Rod Stewart to a Justin Timberlake did I see? And yeah. I'm sure, you know, there's so many others that you could roll off your tongue there. You know, just, I don't want to brag, but I just lost the, the Emmy Award last week for my film Rumble 2. We were nominated, I was nominated for an Emmy and we lost. So I'm officially, I'm officially an Emmy Award losing producer. Oh my God. Well, and, and, and soundtracks too. I mean, you're, you're doing so many soundtracks that we could list as well. I, I know that uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is one that people note with you for a lot, but uh, you know, uh, sad news today in the music world, a guitar legend uh, lost today, and we'd like to, you know, get your thoughts on that. Well, Eddie Van Halen was the second most innovative guitarist, modern guitarist. I mean, you could say maybe the third if you count Les Paul. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, not, there's a bunch of great, great guitar players, but you had Jimi Hendrix who changed the game completely, changed the game completely. And then nobody else really changed the game. They were great, Clapton, Jimmy Page, uh, you know, they changed the game. They did. They they were amazing, and they're legends. We all loved them growing up. But then Eddie Van Halen came, and he changed. He was the most innovative guitarist that you ever heard. And I remember sitting at my dad's house. I was in junior high school in Oceanside, California, and we would listen to the radio station in LA, KMET, and, and a song came on, and we were all like, "What is that?" We all thought, "Is that a synthesizer guitar?" We'd never heard anything like it, and it was Ed Van Halen, and 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 after that, every guitar player changed the way they thought about guitar and the way they played guitar. It, it, it sounds like he had a, a giant impression on you. Did he, in fact, change the way you play guitar? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I worshipped him. He, he made me, I was so inspired by everything he did. And back then, you didn't have the internet, so it was really hard to, to find anything out. And so I remember my girlfriend in Oceanside at El Camino High School, Judy Carpenter, surprised me with tickets to see Van Halen at the San Diego Sports Arena. And, you know, we were sitting a mile away. Uh, and it was just like, oh, and, you know, years later, I would be backstage with him at the San Diego Sports Arena hanging out and having cocktails. But, you know, it, when I was a kid, it was there was nothing like it. Uh, he, nobody could touch him. He was the king. And, and we touched on, you know, some of the you know, big giant names that you've been associated with and played and toured with. Uh, but tell us about your encounters with, with Eddie, Eddie Van Halen and your friendship. Well, you know, with Ed. You know, I, I, I worshipped him. I worshipped him. And one day, I, I finally got my first big break. Um, I left San Diego in 1985 for Los Angeles. And by 1988, I was playing football stadiums with Rod Stewart. So I, I got really lucky. And it was like a big deal at home in San Diego. Like, wow, I'm playing with Rod Stewart. So at the time, Rod Stewart was a superstar. And I got invited to go see Eddie at the Monsters of Rock at the Denver Stadium. Um, so I was backstage hanging out. And then I got invited to meet Ed. Uh, for cocktails at, at a, a, a private club after the show, which I was dying. I'm going to meet my hero for the first time. I was dying. I sit at his table. He buys me a drink. I say to him, Eddie, I, I grew up in San Diego. I worshipped you as a guitar player. I was started playing guitar. And he goes, stop. You're making me feel like an old man. Shut up. And then we continued on having normal conversations. And over the years, we, we, you know, we would see each other. I'd come see him in concert and we'd hang out and he was always so sweet. He was, he was a real kind, gentle soul. And then years later, you know, maybe before I did Mick Jagger, but somewhere in the late 90s, early 2000s, we were actually going on double dates. He was single and I and my girlfriend at the time, and he was dating this girl. We would go to dinner in LA and have double dates. And he was, at, you know, he was just the sweetest, kindest guy. He was out of his mind. But nobody that plays with that kind of genius and that kind of thought is a normal person. He thinks in a whole nother level. I mean, I mean, kind of out of his mind, like one time I couldn't find him in front of a restaurant in LA and he was up in the tree, climbed a tree. It's like, Eddie, get down. So he was a unique, incredible, innovative person. You know, he was not your normal, you know, he wasn't a poser and he wasn't like a, trying to pretend to be an artist. He was, he was truly genius. And, and you know, well, people obviously saw him in the videos and, you know, and, and all of that. What would you give other people, his fans and, and, and San Diego music lovers, 
uh, 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 something that represents him just as a person that you walked away with? If you see, there's a million photos from the 70s all the way till now when he has this smile, he has this dazzling smile with a twinkle in his eye. And that's, that's not like a, a, you know, like an actor who's got to understands exactly how to do that smile in the camera every time. Ed's had this twinkle that would come out of this smile. It was just the charmingness. You'd see it in his eyes, you'd see it in his teeth. And that's truly who he was. He was a gentle soul. And I didn't know him that well. I, you know, but I don't know who really does when you really get to know, you know, people. Um, I just knew that every time I was with him, you know, he, he was, he was, he was fun, and, but he was, a, he was really a genuine, magical person, you know, and um, I will miss him and he will be missed. Uh, there hasn't been anybody like him since. And yourself being a, you know, a world respected guitar player, you touched at first on where he'll be remembered in the place of, of guitar players. Can you expand on that a little bit more, you know, where, where he stands? I believe Ed, Edward Van Halen, there's Jimi Hendrix and there's Edward Van Halen and there's everybody else. And, there, and I'm talking about the greats, not myself, but the greats. We'll always think about Jimmy Page. We'll always think about Eric Clapton. They called him God. You know, we'll think about Pete Townsend. We'll think about all those amazing guys, but none of them were Edward and none of them were Jimi Hendrix. And those two are the Mount Rushmore, along with probably Les Paul as the most innovative guitarist of all times. And by a, my, by, I mean, there's nobody can touch him. I mean, I, I toured with Joe Satriani for six or eight months in 19, 1990 on my first solo tour and, and, and Joe and Steve Vai, who's a dear friend of mine, they're, mo they're super amazing. And Steve Vai is super innovative and Joe's super amazing and consistent. But they all came from the germ of what Edward was doing, right? There's a, something about Ed doing that. And people would say like Rick Derringer did the hammer-ons first and stuff like that, but they didn't do it to the extent where Edward turned it into compositions. You know, it was like Mozart or something on electric guitar. I know that sounds a little corny and dramatic, but it's true. When, when I was a kid and I heard Eruption, it would, it stopped me dead in my tracks. Like, what is that? You know, you never heard anything like that ever. And after that, it became the norm. It changed the world. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, just countless, just people who his lives touched and uh, great moments that he's left them with. Just, uh, you know, I think it's just news of that today of his death of Eddie Van Halen uh, due to cancer. And I think as, you know, as the night settles on here, uh, a lot more memories uh, will come forward. Yeah. yeah, I'm seeing already on Instagram and Facebook, all my rock star buddies are posting about him. He impacted every musician I know. And you, you could be the biggest punk rocker and hate anything to do with rock, but you loved him. He... He brought such a, he had a punk rock energy. Those first few Van Halen albums had a punk rock energy to him, a, an aggressiveness to it that wasn't aggressive like Metallica. It was aggressive like funk. Like Eddie was a real funky guitar player too, you know? The thing that made them amazing was all the girls could dance to the first couple Van Halen albums, right? So when they, the, the, you'd go to a Van Halen concert, it was loaded with girls. And, you, and it was because they could dance to that stuff. It wasn't like bonehead rock. Uh, I'm sure the lyrics weren't the best and, First, David's lyrics were super funny. And then Sam's lyrics were a little bit more of the, you know, Sammy style, the super love song style. And um, I knew, you know, Eddie and David were, I got asked to play guitar for both of them, actually. I, ironically, one, earlier on when Steve Vai quit David, he called me. And then later on, three days after they fired Sammy, Sammy called me. And I actually went as far as going up to Sammy's house and writing with him. And we, we Sammy and I have jammed a million times in, you know, Cabo and places and we're old pals. But um, nobody could take his place. And I, if I would have taken one of those gigs, I would have had to practice for hours. I could play that stuff when I was 15 in my parents' bedroom, in my bedroom at my parents' house, because I sit there for three hours a day, like, you know. And uh, there was a great guitar player in, in uh, San Diego. There were several great ones. You know, uh, Jakey Lee could do that stuff, and he went on to become very famous. And then there was another guitar player in San Diego called Luke Albano in a band called Neptune in Cardiff. And he was my God. And he was the first guy I saw that figured out how to play the eruption because to me, it was, I couldn't even figure out what he was doing. You know, there was no YouTube. 
but then Luke figured it out. And then I started working on it at 16 years old. And, you know, so he changed the world. Edward changed the world. And I don't know how anyone's ever going to change it like he did or Jimmy did because everything seems to have been done now. Incredible. You know, just you, you rolling off <laughs> that experience of being asked by both Van Halen uh, singers to, to join the band. Pretty incredible. And just, uh, you know, just you, you really captured the moment for a lot of Eddie Van Halen fans today. And I, I appreciate you talking with us. Right on. It was so good. Nice to see you and say hi to your brother for me. Okay. Will do. Thank you, Stevie.